Okay, so welcome to Algebra Introduction Pre-Assessment. So the first question that we have is addition. We're adding and subtracting, or what I call combining multiple numbers. We see these double signs, and whenever we see double signs, my advice to you is to combine them and get rid of them. And we know that when we have signs that are next to each other without numbers, um, that's a form of multiplication. So that's a positive times negative three, which would give you negative three. So I would just rewrite this without the double signs. And so the positive and the negative three make negative three, the positive and negative seven make negative seven. And now we're just gonna combine and do orders of operations. We're gonna do three, the two numbers here are three and five, which makes eight. We'll rewrite the rest of the problem. The two numbers here are eight and negative three, which makes five. Five minus seven, or five and negative seven, makes negative two. Same thing here is we see these parentheses around the negative four, and that's really not doing anything. Uh, it's, there's no number to the left, there's no sign to the left, uh, the sign to the right doesn't affect it, that's just showing us subtraction. So I would rewrite it without the parentheses, and then again we have these double signs, which I would write as negative 5. So we'll do left to right, negative 4 and negative 4 makes negative 8. Negative 8 and negative 3 makes negative 11. Negative 11 and negative 5 makes negative 16. In our next set of problems, we have double signs again. And we have a positive and a negative, which again makes a negative. So I would rewrite this problem and then I would work towards simplifying it. Negative three and negative four makes negative seven. Negative seven and negative four makes negative 11. Negative 11 and negative 18 makes negative 19. On number four, we've got double signs. We got three sets of double signs. All three of them are double negatives. So a negative and a negative make a positive. So I would write this as negative four plus four plus eight, plus five. Now all that noise that we saw with the double signs goes away, and we can just simplify across do, using orders of operations, doing it left to right. Negative four and four is zero. Zero plus eight is eight. Eight plus five is 13. Now when we have multiplication, now these parentheses, because we have parentheses next to each other, each of these are multiplication. It's showing multiplication. And since orders of operation tells me to do multiplication left to right, I'm gonna do negative four, ne excuse me, negative two times four, which is negative eight. And then I'll rewrite it. And now I have negative eight times negative three, and negative times a negative is a positive. And then I have 24 times 6. So I don't know that off the top of my head. I'm, I can do it a number of ways. I can do this. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. So I could do it that way. The other way that my head, if I, if I don't have a, uh, the use of a calculator, I can look at 24 times 6. And I can make this 2 times 12. So... I broke the 24 into 2 times 12. And I know what 12 times 6 is, and that's 72. So I did that first, because that's going to be easier, and then doubling 72 is 144. That's another trick, is you can break that product into simpler products, something that you're a little bit more familiar with. Um, with number 6, we again are going to multiply left to right. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 
times 2 times 2, negative 10 times 2 is negative 20, times 2 is negative 40. And what we should know is when I look at this starting problem with number 5, I see that I'm multiplying two negatives. So straight up, right away, I know that my answer is going to end up being positive. In problem number 6, we see we only have one negative. So I know automatically that my solution will be negative. An odd number of negatives multiplying across is going to be a negative answer. An even number of negatives would produce a positive number. Here we have no parentheses and we're using the dots as multiplication. We again are going to multiply left to right. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. Again, I knew my solution was going to be positive because I had only two. I had an even number of negatives that I was multiplying. And so I knew my solution would end up being positive. With this one, I have four negatives multiplying, so I know my solution is going to be positive again. And this one's going to be a little bit more interesting. Um, and how would I do this? Well, uh, I'm just going to multiply across. And if I have to write the product down, negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18. We have positive 18 times negative 2, which is negative 36. And now we have to do negative 36 times 6. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. So I'll just do that. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 3 is 18. Plus 3 is 21. So I get 216 as my solution. And positive because I have a negative times a negative. Find each quotient. We notice that we have a 0. And that 0 is in the numerator. So my answer is going to be 0. I'm eating 0 slices of a pizza that has three slices. Remember, if that zero was in the denominator, my solution would be no solution. But because my zero, I only have one zero and it's in the numerator, my answer is going to be zero. 90 over 10 is going to be 9. Here I have 32 divided by negative 4. If I need to rewrite it so it makes more sense to me, by all means do that. A positive divided by a negative is going to give me a negative, and I get negative 8. And again, with number 12, if I need to write it as a fraction in order for my eyes to be comfortable with it, I have a negative divided by a negative, which produces a positive, and 70 over 7 gives me a positive 10. Now we have orders of operations. We have parentheses. We've got multiple, uh, actually we've got a couple parentheses, grouping symbols. We have grouping symbols there. Uh, we're going to do the innermost. Remember we use the term nested. So we will do what's inside there. And I've got double signs, so I'm going to rewrite this as negative 3 times the quantity of negative 3 plus 6 plus 1 minus the quantity of negative 1 plus 1. Whew. All right, so I'm still going to do the innermost grouping symbol. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so I'm going to rewrite it. Minus, and I ended up with 0 in that, so I bring the 0. And now I still have a grouping symbol. I'm still going to do these grouping symbols. And I have addition, addition, and subtraction. So I'm just going to do these left to right. So I'll just do negative 3 plus 6. So that gives me positive 3 plus 1 minus 0. I can do a shortcut. I don't have to do that step. Well, let's put it in there. Let's be meticulous. And now I'm going to do left to right still. I'm going to do 3 plus 1, so I have negative 3 times the quantity. 3 plus 1 is 4 minus 0. 4 minus 0 is 4, and I get negative 12. 
So once I simplify it, notice that operation was multiplication. So that's how I knew that I needed to multiply this. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That um, combination, combining those numbers. All right, we got a little bit more happening here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these double signs to make it a little bit less noisy. And then I have... So I have grouping symbols, and I have division, and I have addition and subtraction. So I'm going to do the division first, and that division is 3 divided by 1. So I have 3 plus 1 plus 4 times negative 3, and then 3 divided by 1 is 3. So I have negative 3 plus 3. So I'm still doing these grouping symbols. I have to simplify completely within the grouping symbols. So I have 3 plus 1 plus 4 um, and th negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So my operations now are addition and subtraction, addition, subtraction, multiplication. I'm going to do the multiplication first. So I'm going to multiply 4 times 0, which is 0. So I get 3 plus 1 plus 0. 3 plus 1 is 4. Plus 0 is 4. That's a good one. I like that one. Number 15. Ah, we have a vinculin plus. We've got this very hidden negative sign there. But we have to simplify what's in the numerator and simplify what's in the denominator before we do this division we got to hold off on that. So let's simplify the denominator. The denominator, we have multiplication, addition, addition, subtraction. So we're going to do this multiplication first. And that multiplication is negative 5 times negative 2. So I have the opposite of 18 over negative 1 plus 10. That was negative 5 times negative 2 plus 3 minus 6. Now I have to simplify this denominator, all of this stuff. So I have negative 1 plus 10. Negative 1 plus 10 is 9 plus 3 minus 6. I'm going to do 9 plus 3, which is 12. So I have 18 over 12 minus 6. I'm going to simplify the 12 minus 6. So I, have, I keep putting that negative there. I have the opposite of 18 over 6, which gives me 3, so my solution is negative 3. Notice that I did this and didn't even worry about this sign. That just came down, and I simplified the 18 over 6, so my answer is going to be negative 3. Number 16, and just things to remember that negative 5 over 3 is the same as 5 over negative 3, which is the same as negative 5 over 3. Doesn't matter if it's, in the, if it's in the numerator, you can pop it down to the denominator. Or you can just bring it completely out. Because the, the sign of the number just tells direction. Since it's negative, it just means left. The number tells the distance. So when I have negative 6, the direction is negative, and the distance is 6. When I have positive 5, the sign is positive, meaning it will be on the right side of the number line, and the distance is 5. So each number has a direction and distance. So when we see it in this form, the direction is still negative. The direction is still negative. The direction is negative. It doesn't matter if it's in the numerator, denominator, or outside of the fraction. The important thing was that there was only one negative, there's only one negative, and there's only one negative. So be aware of that. That's a little, little fun fact for you. All right, we got lots of noise here. Let's do this division first. And we're not going to combine signs. We're just going to, we're going to do this division first. So we have 5 minus 4 minus the quantity of negative 2 minus 3 minus 
What's negative 15 divided by 3 is positive 3. I'm not going to write a plus 3 there because I just wrote the 3. When I write the 3, when I bring the 3 down, we understand that it's positive. And then we bring down that negative. So now I have 5 minus 4 minus, and we're going to simplify inside the parentheses. We have negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 5. And we still have to simplify inside the parentheses. So we have 5 minus 4 minus negative 8. And now we can combine these double signs because there's nothing happening. We couldn't combine them right now. We can't combine them here because the grouping symbol is not simplified. There are operations going on, so I, that does not allow me to combine those two negatives. So be careful of that little doodad. So let's combine them now because the parentheses are completely, uh, the grouping symbols have been simplified. So we have 5 minus 4 plus 8, and now we'll do orders of operations left to right. 5 minus 4 is 1, 1 plus 8 is 9. Number 17, now we have the distributive property. These are unlike terms, so I can't combine them. These are x-rays, these are dollars. We can't combine x-ray machines and dollars. So how we can simplify this is through the distributive property. We're going to distribute a negative 3 to 9x, and we're going to distribute a negative 3 to negative 7. Those are the two terms inside the parentheses. Negative 3 times 9x is negative 27x. Negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. Number 18, we again, we can't combine those even though they have the same number. One's a variable, one's a constant. So we will distribute negative 8 times negative 4n and negative 8 times 4. Negative 8 times negative 4n gives me 32n. We don't distribute it to the 4 and the n. When we multiply unlike terms, we multiply the numbers, the coefficients, and then bring the variables. So negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. So we get positive 32n minus 32. In number 19, we're distributing a 7 to 10b and a positive 7 to a negative 5. That gives us 70b minus 35. In the last one, we're going to distribute a 5 to a 3 and a positive 5 to a 4p. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4p is 20p. And remember, we need it in standard form. And standard form says that variables will always come before constants. So we would need to rewrite this as 20p plus 15. That would be my final answer. All right. Uh, hopefully this helps. And if you had any questions about the steps, but here is an in-depth explanation of the pre-assessment. Good luck.